A very good evening to you, our esteemed viewers. Let me take this opportunity to thank you, you who has watched Family TV throughout the entire week, from Sunday up to this day. Today is a Friday, of course, if you didn't know, let me remind you. But of course, I know at a time like this, we are so anxious because we are now going for our weekend. But like we've already said, before we go to the weekend, we have to get this important information. Health Port is right here, and here we are. Remember, this program is brought to you by Makerere University School of Public Health, together with Family TV. Edwin Austin Mukalas is my name. Meba Murungi, our sign language interpreter. And today we have Dr. Angelina Kakoza. Doctor, we are glad we have you today. Thank you very much. Kindly uh, greet our esteemed viewers. Uh, dear viewers who are watching Family TV, it's a pleasure that I am here this day to share with you my experience regarding various uh, medical conditions. And I welcome you and thank you for viewing. Well, thank you so much, Doctor. Uh, according to the World Health Organization report, it is said that 10% of the world's population are children and youths with disabilities. And 80% of these come, uh, come from developing countries. And Uganda happens to be one of the developing countries, if we can say. And this means that we are also at risk. That is why today we have come up with a topic. And this topic is uh, actually, children and youths with disabilities, or what we call developmental disabilities in Uganda. We are specifically looking at Uganda. We don't want to look into other countries because let us first save our own children. Then we shall think about the others. So Dr. Kakoza is here, Angelina, to take us through this. Doctor, how can you define disabilities? Now, um, developmental disabilities are a group of chronic conditions. Chronic <clears throat> means long-standing. And these conditions develop from the time of when a child is being formed in the mother's womb up to the time of when the child is even developing. These chronic conditions usually consist of conditions which affect their physical state, can affect their brain, the way that they understand, the way that they think, and also can affect their behavior, can affect their speech and language. And in such a way, these children do not behave or do not conduct themselves the way that other normal children behave. And this group of conditions consists of things like, one, cerebral palsy. Maybe, uh, before you go to cerebral palsy, yes. there is something you mentioned as you were... Uh, defining yes. disabilities. And you say that these are chronic, uh, these chronic, are conditions. chronic conditions yes. that come from that day, that may come from that day when a mother conceives. Yes. Can we first of all look at that? Why, why, why do they come in the first place? Now, why do they come? Yes. There are so many, so many conditions or so many uh, situations that can happen at the time that the egg from the mother and the egg from the father meet. That point is a very, very critical point in the time of development of a child. Many people think that a child is only considered a child once the mother is already far down in pregnancy and the mother is already about to deliver. When the scan is able when the to detect scan is the able sex to detect. of the child. No, 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 no. The time of birth, the time of conception, at that point when the eggs meet, that is a child. Irrespective of whether the child is cells, whether the child is just a few, few cells that are being formed. It's a very critical period. Now, the issue is, at that time, when the egg of the mother and the egg of the father meet, what has happened? How has that mother been? Is this mother prepared to actually have this child? One of the conditions that we see, what people have mentioned, is a condition where you find a mother giving birth to a child 
and the back of this child is not complete. At the back, you find a swelling. This is what we call spina bifida. Yes. A mother like that, it has been shown in the literature that a mother who is born with very little or minimal amount of folic acid. Folic acid is a vitamin B, one of the types of vitamin B, which is found, which is supposed to have as a mother before you conceive. You should have adequate amounts. Mothers who have minimal amounts of this folic acid vitamin have been found to have higher incidence or higher frequency of getting such problems. So going back to your question, yes. at the time of conception, it's important that that situation is well prepared. Has the mother fed well? How is her nutrition? And her nutrition does not start at the time of pregnancy. It starts way back in childhood. As a girl, how was she feeding? How was she being taken care of? So you find that this mother, it's not a matter of, yes, I want to have a child, let me go and meet Mr. X and I get the baby. No. How is your nutrition? How is your health? How is this mother in terms of infections within her? You may find that the mother does not know. Maybe she has a sexually transmitted disease. Maybe she has something within her that has not been treated. Or during the time of pregnancy, she may get malaria. Malaria in pregnancy can also affect this baby as the baby is growing. Maybe she may get something as simple as Maybe it can be some, some mothers can get a rash and they think, ah, I think it's just a, a simple rash. And but some rash, people yes. uh, traditionally think yeah. that this is part of the signs of pregnancy. Yeah, it may think it's part of the signs of pregnancy, yet that rash may be, sus may be uh, suspicious of a certain infection which we call rubella, German measles. That infection is very, very dangerous to get during pregnancy because children like that can be born with a defect in their heart, can be born with uh, eye problems, and things like that. So the time of pregnancy, the time of conception, is a very delicate period. How you prepare for it? During the time that you're pregnant, to the time when you're also delivering. So it's very important. Okay. So uh, I think now we can go to the common, common, common disorders yeah. in Uganda. Now the common disorders that mm -hmm. we have in Uganda I was um, privileged to carry out research on this particular topic. We actually carried out this research in the early 2000s. It was about 2009. We looked at uh, two situations. We wanted to see children in an urban setting and children in a rural setting. So we went to Wakiso in a, a bit, you know Wakiso is close to Kampala. But it has also certain areas which are like rural areas. So we went to certain areas within Wakiso to give an example of a rural place. And we came to Kampala. And Kampala, we were in Tinda, areas of Banda, and things like that. Why did you select those areas? We selected, those, a we selected those areas. Actually, we selected them scientifically. Because in research, you're not supposed to have a bias in terms of <laughs> where you want to go. I can say, ah, because I stay in Tinda, let me go to Tinda. We made a list of all those areas that were within the Kampala district, all the five divisions, Nakawa and all that. Then we chose from that area, which areas are we going to go through? Nakawa, we had the, and in fact in Nakawa, we had to get a representation of the slum areas and of the upscale areas to get a good description of Kampala and what? Urban areas. And then we went to Wakiso, the same thing. We chose the areas like that scientifically. Now what we realized is that there is a very high burden of these children with developmental disabilities. About 10 per 100 to 13 per 100 children within Uganda have these disabilities, meaning that it is very, very high. Yes. What are these disabilities? And some, some, some parents yes. have actually not considered this serious. Yes. Some people have attached it to, you know, archaic, archaic reasons, like it is witchcraft or curses and what. Yes. And it, you realize that it is becoming a very big problem. I think this is the reason as to why it is continuing to, exactly. to appear. Yes. So it is very important. I'm going to come to that, that point that you have raised. It's very, very important to understand 
Now, when you tell me about what are those conditions, yeah. conditions like cerebral palsy, conditions like epilepsy, conditions like hearing, a child is born not able to hear, a child is born with visual problems, and certain children are also born with what we call attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. What do I mean by that? Your child cannot sit still. Now you viewers are able to look at us. You see that she's in her sign language, but she's seated normally doing her work. I am seated here with a presenter and we are talking. But those children cannot sit still. One minute they're here, the next minute they're there, another minute they're here. You tell them to do something. What did you ask me to do? They have forgotten. Those are children we call with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. That is one of the developmental disabilities. Others can have what we call coordination disorder. They have a problem in which they are doing certain things. They tend to be what they're like clumsy. They're doing one thing, but somehow they don't seem to be getting it quite well. Other children have... Some um, people attribute that to personality differences. Well, sometimes yes and sometimes no. That is why we are telling you all these, so that you can find out, does my child fit into this? Could it be that Mary has this? Could it be that John has this? So that you can seek medical advice, rather than sitting there and saying, assuming, assuming that you know, <laughs> my child has taken long, and another condition I haven't mentioned is speech and language. Some people out there may say, ah, the grandfather, took actually three years yeah. without talking. Even the mother took these years. Your child may be having a problem with speech and language. Speech and language, the child may not be able to talk. Some children may be talking, but they're talking, no, 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 no. They are just, you know, stuttering. All those problems. And there's another condition which we call autism. Autism spectrum disorder. A child has a problem with communication. A child has problem with uh, certain behaviors. When she wants to communicate something, she cannot say, I want this. She has to pull your hand and take you to that place because she cannot talk. She may be able to understand certain things, but then she does not communicate in the way that they are about, that they are supposed to talk. So all these conditions make up what we call developmental disabilities. And they are very many and they are very common so it is important that you understand that these are chronic conditions which have a reason for why they are there because something happened during the time of development of this child's brain. So those who say it is witchcraft, no, I've got to go and see <laughs> traditional healer and all that, please, it is inherited. please, please yeah. be warned that there is a, these conditions are there and they need us to identify them and start early in terms of managing them. Dr. Angelina, yes. I think at that very point, let us go for a short commercial break. Yes. And then when we come back, of course, we shall continue with our today's topic. Okay, thank you. As you think about the Lord just taking over your case and you are no longer in the midst of it, and he says, fear not. Okay. Demons from the mountains, scream, scream and leave. leave. In the name of Demons the from, the, from the graves, scream, scream and leave. In the name, the name, name of Jesus. This is the second session or the second part of this program, Health Port. Now, you who has just joined in, we welcome you. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy this second session, this second part. Remember, we are looking at what we call developmental disabilities in children and youth. And Dr. Angelina is taking us through. So, Doctor, 
Yes. Uh, before you went for the commercial break, I had a burning question. Okay. You talked about all the, 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 the disorders and all the possible disabilities. Yes. And you also talked about some of the signs. But at what age should a parent confirm that mm, my child must be having this disorder and this is now beyond the ordinary impairments we may think of? Okay. Um, each particular developmental disability has its particular age. For example, one of them, attention deficit, hyperactivity. This condition where I talked about a child is not able to sit, is moving up and down, cannot settle. Usually they start that diagnosis from the age of four years because earlier than four, it may be quite difficult to diagnose that. What makes Other it conditions, difficult? Um, because um, the tools that are used to diagnose these children have not been developed for children who are younger. And it's somewhat difficult for us to, uh, to decide whether this child is actually having this condition or not. So the Isn't it tools. a disservice for this child, just in case uh, a child is two years and mm -hmm. they have this disorder, and then they cannot, uh, they cannot diagnose this disorder at two years, doesn't it mature and become severe? Uh, of course, there is a benefit. There's always a benefit in early diagnosis. Yeah. But this particular condition, attention deficit, we cannot confirm its presence until around the age of four years, based on other things that we are going to observe in this child that what, need to have developed by that age. What are some of these things that you observe? Well, there are certain mannerisms, there are certain things that you're going to ask this child and also going to be able to observe. So it is the doctor's, uh, it helps the doctor at that age, from four years onwards, to have identified those particular symptoms and signs which will then help him or her make that diagnosis. So it is important that a mother is observant to see how long have these conditions persisted. And remember that as a child is growing, getting to know the environment, with time, some children who may have appeared to be something else, with time settle down. So usually, by the age of four, if this has persisted, then this is a child who would require to have that diagnosis. Other conditions can be diagnosed earlier. For example, vision. If a child is not able to see, you don't have to wait for four years. That child will be knocking objects. You'll find that this child is you're calling the child. The child cannot follow the mother with the eyes. When you switch on the light, she cannot look up when the light is on. Things like that. Hearing. That can also be diagnosed early. You make noise, the child cannot startle. Things like that. And a child with cerebral palsy, you find the child's problems with movements and things like that can also be diagnosed early. So is, it's is, important to... Is yeah. stammering also part of them? Speech and language, yes. It's very much part because speech and language disorders can vary. You can stutter. Sometimes you may not be able to have attained speech because usually speech development, you start with uh, the mother, the baby will start cooing, then start bubbling. After that, we'll start with one word. May you say mama, tata. After one word, can say two words, mommy, come, daddy, go. Then after that, start with other three words. Mommy, come here, give me these things like that. But if a child, by the time the child is two years, not a single word. You start suspecting there must be something At least wrong. by two years, we expect this child to have started yes, bubbling. To have st bub two years, no. Two years is too late to bubbling. Bubbling is in the first one year. But by two years, at least should have a two-word vocabulary. Two words at least. So if you find two years has not even said a single word, you start getting worried. What yeah. about the, the, the dumb? Now, those who are dumb, and of course when you are dumb, it happens that you need to hear to be able to speak. So if you have a problem with hearing, you're not going to be able to understand what the other people are saying. It's different from a child who was able to speak, then got a problem, and then stopped speaking. 
That child can read your lips and say, oh, they are saying this and understand. But someone who is dumb means that this child was not even able to perceive anything in their ears, be it whatever sound. So because of that, that they are not able to perceive any sound, they're not able to process it and respond to you. So you need to have this child learn the words and then be able to respond to you. So if you are dumb, it means that you have to go through uh, an, uh, a, a check, an analysis to find out, can we use a hearing aid for you to hear? Or it's not possible, we need to take you for speech and language and have her assist you. Okay. Mm. So uh, as we are opening up this, this program mm. in the first part, you talked about the people who are most at risk. Yes. But of course, you didn't emphasize them. Now, someone out there might not have noticed that they are part of this group. So I want you to re-emphasize these people who are most at risk. Okay. Yeah. So people who are at risk for this, of course, as I mentioned earlier, it begins from the time of pregnancy. So if a mother conceives this child, one, and has deficiency in certain nutrients, we just gave an example of folic acid, if the mother is, during the time of pregnancy, gets an infection, it may be uh, infection in the genital urinary tract, it may be an infection, maybe she has malaria, or she even gets uh, any other sickness which makes her be admitted during the time of pregnancy. Sometimes it may not even be an infection, she may get hypertension. There are these mothers whose pressure goes up because they are during the time of pregnancy. And remember that when their pressure goes up, the blood supply to the, through the placenta, which connects the mother to the baby through the placenta, is also tampered with. So this child may end up also getting problems with the blood supply, damaging the brain. Or it might be something that happens. Maybe the mother was on a border border, border, border travel and she was trying to reach to a certain place goes on this border border, has an accident, pregnant, she falls down, and she hurts herself. But remember, she's pregnant. She does not know that maybe she also injured the baby by accident. She reaches the time of delivery, everything is fine, but when she delivers this baby, the baby has a challenge. So any injury to the mother, infection to the mother, deficiency in nutrients to the mother, puts that mother at risk. Then the problem can also occur Genetically, we remember we talked about the father's egg and the mother's egg meeting together. You may find that certain conditions are in families. What do I mean by that? That you find a certain family having certain illnesses. Probably they have problems with uh, vision. They may be having problems with hearing. They may be having problems with a condition called epilepsy. And that condition runs in families. So you find that when the father and this mother, they meet, okay, the eggs meet, the genes, the genes which make up that father's makeup come into this child and also contribution comes from the mother. But the genes from the father's side, for example, they are genes which have epilepsy. So this child may be born normal, but at some point in their life, start developing this because of that genetic background. And that is where the witchcraft syndrome comes in. <laughs> because of course when people start saying, you see it's Chirimuchika, it's in the clan. Mm. So we better go to the clan, appease the spirits. Yes. No, 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 no. This is something Concept in their genes. The <laughs> yeah. This is something in your genes which is causing this challenge. Doctor, what then, do you have to say about preterm babies? I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. So we've been talking about before before the child is born. Mm. What can happen? Genetics, infections, happening to the mother and everything. Now we come to the time, around the time of birth. A baby is born, what we can call premature. Remember that a child is supposed to be at a certain period within the mother's womb and then be born. So if a child is born before 36 weeks, 36 completed weeks, we call that child preterm. The child may be born because maybe the mother got hypertension or maybe the mother got sick 
and then somehow she got premature labor and then delivered. So this baby is born, for lack of a better word, when she has not been cooked properly. Cooked in the sense that she has not gotten all that she needs for her to be ready to be received into this world. So as it is, this child is sort of born with certain things that are missing. Missing in the sense that they were not very well developed. Such a child is at risk. Even a child who is born with a small weight, what we call low birth weight babies. Babies who are born with a birth weight which is less than 2.5 kilos. Because ideally a child should be born greater than 2.5 kilos. When you're born when you're small or you're born when you have a low birth weight, you're at risk for getting these conditions. Then you may be born, but probably the time when you're being born, the mother has a problem during the time of birth. She may be narrow. The birth canal is narrow, such that as the child tries to move through the birth canal to come out, the child gets damaged, gets injured. The brain is sort of squeezed as they're trying to pass out. That child is also at risk because the blood supply to the brain is cut off and tampered with, such as this child is born with those problems. Sometimes the mother may be, the baby may be trying to come out, but for one reason or the other, the mother is not, a, you know, there are some mothers who can have a problem, which we call, I, I don't want to say it in the medical language, but the uterus is not contracting at the same time as the labor should be. Because as the labor goes on, the uterus is supposed to open, the mouth of the uterus is supposed to open and allow the baby to come through. But what happens is, as the baby is trying to come out, the uterus remains closed or opens only a little. In such a case, the mother, the child is trying to force through, have you ever tried to force through a, a wall? It is hitting resistance, hitting resistance, hitting resistance. That can also damage the brain. brain. So you can find a mother who's having prolonged labor. Those issues of having prolonged labor, those issues of having problems with the time of the birth canal can all result in such issues. That then infections. Um, yeah. In, in, in a one or two minutes, hmm. how can we prevent these, these conditions? Looking back at what I was just talking about, there are some conditions that can be prevented and there are some that cannot. There is no way you can reinvent yourself if you have a genetic problem. That is you and that is you. Yeah. But conditions, for example, nutrients, if you know that you're planning to get pregnant, make sure that you feed on a balanced diet to ensure that the environment of your baby who's going to be formed in you is good. You can do that. When it comes to issues of delivery, make sure that you go and receive antenatal care. You're covered completely. Make sure that they make sure that you, they take care of you. If they find you have complications and you're not able to deliver normally, book for cesarean section so that you can be delivered and save your child from having such complications. If you have any infection, treat it early. Seek medical advice and receive the treatment that you need so that you don't pass this infection to your child. Yeah. Those Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much, Dr. Angelina. Yeah, most and welcome. Like Dr. Angelina said, she has talked about she talked about very many disorders. But next week I uh, we are going to talk about cerebral palsy in uh, specifically uh, cerebral palsy. So you shouldn't miss Dr. Angelina next week taking us through the same, sorry, through that topic. But thank you so much, you who studied with us, and you are still with us. Erin Austin Mukalazi is my name. I've worked with Dr. Angelina from Makere University School of Public Health. I've worked with Mebo Murunji, our sign language interpreter. Jonah Jal, the producer, Bantam in transmission, and Tony Santo on social media. But of course, Brenda, who helps us coordinate this whole program so that you can, it can benefit you. Thank you so much. Enjoy your weekend and good night.